Sup, bitches. Or at least that is what Sergeant Rex Power Cult would say if he was doing this commentary. Which, of course, he is not. You are instead stuck with me, despite the fact that he's clearly far funnier and he's ruggedly handsome to boot, despite his robo enhancements. Now, if you didn't know, he is the hero of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. That's what we're playing right now. So, what is this nonsense? Well, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon is a game using the Far Cry 3 base game to make a game that is basically so outlandish and retro and just really doesn't give a shit about itself, which makes for a really, really good time. Here is the first 15 minutes of the game, which as you can see, it's, it's like playing Duke Nukem whilst being in an 80s disco. You know, retro theme doesn't quite do the game justice, but that is, of course, very accurate. Now... I don't know how true this is, but I was told, or I read somewhere, that this game actually started out as an April Fool's joke, and it kind of stemmed from there. How true that is, I don't know, but regardless, we are we are playing it today. It only came out today, and this is the first uh, first play of it, basically. Now you play the game as Sergeant Rex Power Cult. The game is essentially about saving the world. And your character needs to kill someone. But not before he is done killing everything and anything that walks before him and basically not giving a shit while he's doing it. Being as cheesy you can remember all the 80s films being, but all rolled into one, and that's kind of what you get with this game. It doesn't have 3D cutscenes, but instead it has 2D scenes to explain the action. It's, it's actually like I'm sat here playing Super Nintendo all over again, but when the action does kick in, I see the game, I see the graphics, and then I'm brought back down to reality in a, in a good way. The game looks fantastic, especially with the crazy art direction and such, but of course it's going to look great. After all, it's based around Far Cry 3. You know, it's using the Far Cry 3 engine and the base game mechanics, and that was already a great-looking game. And then they've taken it, and done something completely different, added on a ridiculous story, and that of course is going to make for a great game. Now while the game mechanics are exactly the same from Far Cry 3, I think and if you didn't know that you wouldn't be able to tell that it was based off Far Cry 3 in any way, shape or form. You know, the styling and the direction, they're nothing alike. This game has basically been put through a retro VHS 1980s blender and this is what has, this is what's come out of it. Now this section here actually had me in stitches on the video. It's so simple but it it made me laugh. Essentially it's going through tutorials as you go along. Like the beginning part was quite funny when it was telling you to do tutorials to move and look around. And this part here is basically uh, it's telling you that the uh, tutorials are brought by uh, Kobayashi Lubricant, Lubricating Your Future. And then it essentially goes through uh, quick points after quick points. You keep clicking OK, it keeps telling you random things on how to play the game. And it keeps doing it, and doing it, and doing it, until you just can't take anymore. But I was sat there just, for some reason, just laughing. Uh, it, I found it funny anyway. The colours that they're using, you see in purples, reds, blues, they just take over the world. And neon would be an understatement. But the world looks different, it looks amazing, you know, and it is something completely we haven't seen for a long, long time. This sort of ridiculous retroness is almost a breath of fresh air in a weird way because it used to be how games were played. Now, I'll do a full review probably once I've played the game and completed it. It's only just been released today, a matter of hours ago, uh, and after I've had a chance to play through the entire game I'll probably do a, a proper review. But so far I've really enjoyed what I've played. Even the shotgun reload animation is just awesome. Uh, it really does have elements of Duke Nukem as well in terms of the voiceovers just when you're playing and general comments uh, and that was quite nostalgic. In a way it's actually done what Nuke uh, Duke Nukem failed to do with the reboot game. It's just made a good game, not taking itself seriously, but whereas the Duke Nukem reboot made a complete hash of it, this has just put a game together and made it good. The game, it's not trying to be anything, it's not. It's not trying to be serious 
or stereotypical. It's trying to purposely take the mick out of itself and just not care and go back to the roots of games that we used to love. It's taking the mick out of loads of different things that it sees in games today and just saying, yep, yeah, we're just going to take the mick out of it and we don't care. In games where we just ran around blasting things with ridiculous colours and themes and explosions. You know, games where cheese was the order of the day and cutscenes were still a figment of our gaming imagination. This is what this game has taken us back to. Now, the game is set in the future after uh, post-apocalyptic nuclear events. So the guns that you're playing with are quite fitting for this retro, neon, post-apocalyptic time. You know, you've got plasma guns and sort of plasma sniper rifles and like a plasma pistol as well. And I'm not entirely sure what it means, but when you kill somebody, you can uh, essentially take their heart. Not quite sure what that's all about. Um, it's not even that macabre. You're not really pulling out blood or anything. It's actually quite enjoyable in a weird way. Dare I say that? Uh, but the gunplay is pretty solid from what I've played. You know, it, the, the gunplay and the mechanics are going to be very similar from Far Cry 3. I mean, if you take the base game that already works and then just keep that element but change the story and the setting, there's not really a massive amount that can go wrong with it. If you've already got good game mechanics and good gunplay, then there's no real need to change it. But by not changing it, they've still, you know, it, it doesn't feel stale because you've got completely different weapons in a completely different setting, so the game feels very, very different from Far Cry 3 while still feeling similar. Um, so they haven't needed to change it too much, but it's changed plenty that you don't really notice it from Far Cry 3. So should you get it? Well, yeah. <laughs> Why not? It isn't a full price game, uh, it's only £11.99 UK. Uh, UK pounds, so I'd imagine that's roughly $20. My amazing mathematics skills are probably incorrect. I don't really know the exact exchange rate, but I'd imagine it'd be in the region of $20-ish. And it's well worth a pickup, you know, for that sort of price. You know, this isn't like a, a full game release, if that makes sense. This isn't a full-fledged game. It's more of a smaller cut-down game, uh, hence the price bracket. You should definitely pick it up. Uh, as I say, I'll give a full review probably in maybe three or four days' time after I've played the game completely. But what I've played so far is just a fun, not taking itself too seriously, and that's just what makes it so chilled out and relaxing to play and funny to play. So I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. Uh, I won't talk over any more of it. Just watch the last sort of eight minutes of game footage, seven or eight minutes, and I will catch you on the next one. I served under him too, Spider. No way he went rogue. Not him. You ready to put a bullet in the big man? Let's just get to the mainframe and figure out what the hell is going on. Who's the shit? Eliminate all Omega Force soldiers while protecting Spider. It's Omega Force, all right. And reminder, after a blade takedown, you can chain kill nearby enemies. Protecting heavily armored cyber soldiers. Use heavy ordnance.
motherfuckers were decommissioned. Last I heard, we were still using them. Testing payload dispersal up in the Canadian wastelands. What kind of payload? I don't think I want to know. Objective complete. Mainframe load.